the GLC midweek update on what's going on in Israel and, right. and elsewhere. and so Mostly Israel today. Okay, it's something else. Huh? Well, the letter today is from Roswell, from Johnny, and it says, I'm enjoying Al's book, and I want to pay some for rent, printing, and shipping. So please accept this $100 in cash. Bless you, Johnny from Roswell, New Mexico. And Johnny, we thank you for that. We That's really very do. nice. We certainly do. I want to do you. It's neat when people go above and beyond. Yeah. That's right. Just to, you know. And thank, thank all of you who are calling and uh, dropping notes about the book, that you've gotten it and you're enjoying it. That's so encouraging to Al. So. <laughs> it makes Al easier to live with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we do have a, a devotional today from David Wilkerson. We haven't had one in a few days. So that it's high time we have one. God has always wanted a people who would walk totally reliant on him before the eyes of the world. That's why he took the insignificant little nation of Israel and isolated them in a wilderness. He was placing them in a school of testing to produce a people who would trust in him no matter what their circumstances. He wanted Israel to testify. I can go through any test, any difficulty, even those beyond my ability. How? I know my God is with me in every trial. Wow. He will always bring me through. Consider Moses' statement to Israel. God suffered you to, hung, to suffer hunger. Deuteronomy 8.3. The Lord was telling them, I orchestrated your trial. It was not the devil. I possessed all the bread and meat you needed the whole time. And I was ready to drop it out of the sky at any minute. It was all stored up for you, waiting for you to receive it. But I withheld it for a while, and I did this for a season. I was waiting for you to come to the end of all your self-reliance. I wanted to bring you to a point of crisis where only I could deliver you. I allowed you to experience your wit's end, a place of human helplessness. And it required a miracle of deliverance from me. Today, the Lord is still looking for a people who will totally rely on him. He wants Israel to testify both in word and actions that God is all-powerful on their behalf. He wants an unsaved world to see that he works mightily for those who love him. Job declared, he knows the way that I take. When he's tried me, I shall come out as gold. And that's Job 23.10. Here's an incredible statement, especially considering the context in which Job spoke it. Job suffered one of the worst trials any human could undergo. He lost all his children in a tragic accident, and then he lost his wealth and possessions. Finally, he lost his physical health. And all these things happened in such a short time, they were utterly overwhelming. Yet God had put Job on this path, and the Lord alone knew where it eventually would lead. It was a plan so divinely orchestrated that God even allowed Satan to do the afflicting of Job. That's why Job couldn't see God in any of it. I go forward, but he's not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. And that's from Job 23, 8 through 10. Job was saying, I know that God knows everything I'm enduring, and he knows the way through it. My Lord is trying, to, trying me right now, and I'm confident he'll bring me through with a stronger faith. I'll come out purged and cleansed with a faith more precious than gold. Wow. So, I needed that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We can was, pray that for Israel yeah. today, that, that they take the stories of the Bible that are theirs yes. and say, that's our God. Amen. He promised to protect us and put all their trust in him. And God's waiting to destroy their enemies. That's absolutely true. You know, before you get to your article, I was, 
Another thing occurred to me today, the propaganda kings of the Gestapo, you know, they had this saying, if you repeat a lie often enough, mm -hmm. people begin people to believe, believe it. People believe it, yeah. Right. And I noticed that you're repeating the same lie over and over in Hamas. Oh, yeah. And people are beginning to believe and it. What is that lie? That lie is that uh, it's all of Israel's fault that we're shooting those rockets. Mm -hmm. Of course, they shot rockets before anything happened. Oh, yes. And in my book, I, it's amazing, in that new book we talk about, what happened in um, in '09? Same thing happened. Same thing happened, and uh, it's going on now. And we were personal witnesses in Israel to see it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to go to a video uh, by Lars right now, and uh, so we haven't seen this yet either. So, oh boy, this we're is good. looking forward to this word from Lars to bring us up to date today. Shalom. I'm Lars Anderson coming to you from Israel on the border to Gaza. The battle is now raging uh, full force inside Gaza. In fact, last night we heard the heaviest shelling so far uh, since the ground operation began almost two weeks ago now. And uh, we need to pray, friends, because Israel is now going deeper into Gaza, into new neighborhoods in their battle against Hamas. I want to start with a praise report, though, in this report and that is that last night there was a memorial service in the great synagogue in Jerusalem in memory of the three kidnapped Israeli teenagers that were brutally murdered by Hamas and the unanimous uh, testimony in this memorial service was how the death of these three young boys have united the nation of Israel in a very unique way even the leader of the opposition Yitzhak Herzog spoke and said, we are now united thanks to these three boys, both the opposition and the government. We are in a unique agreement that we must go after Hamas. It has not only united the nation, uh, it has also motivated the army with a tremendous motivation to go after Hamas here in Gaza. So the government is united. The nation is united. 90% of Israel is behind the government in this operation. This is something that we need to thank God for, that he is watching over his people in such a marvelous way. And I want to read now uh, from Ephesians chapter 6, the famous scripture there, where Paul says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We must understand that this battle against Hamas is primarily a spiritual battle. And uh, Psalm 83 makes it very clear that those who attack Israel, they also attack God. Israel's enemies are God's enemies and uh, the God because he is the God of Israel you cannot separate the two and his those who attack Israel are therefore also the enemy of the Messiah of Israel our Savior Yeshua Jesus uh, the Messiah so we need to understand this is a confrontation with the forces of evil and our prayers are needed in order to see this defeated what uh, Israel is fighting against now here in Gaza is the uh, militant Islamic fundamentalism that Hamas stands for. This is a threat not only against Israel, uh, it is a threat against the entire world, against the US, against Europe. Uh, there is not a nation on the face of the earth that is not threatened by the force of Hamas. So what Israel is fighting here is something that is involving the entire world. It's the greatest threat against world peace for the whole nation uh, of Israel and for the entire world. So we need to pray, friends, that Israel will defeat Hamas because that is going to mean uh, not only the defeat of Hamas, but a spiritual breakthrough for the whole world. Hamas' ultimate goal is not just a Palestinian state. It is not only uh, the destruction of Israel, in fact. The ultimate goal of Hamas is the Islamic Caliphate over the entire world. 
Israel is now fighting this battle at the front lines. We need to support them. We need to pray. And I encourage you, get together with friends in your prayer group. Pray together in your congregation uh, where you worship. Uh, set aside days of fasting and prayer. Now is the time when we need to pray uh, for Israel. So go to our website, thewatchman.org. Download these prayer alerts uh, to your computer so you get them. And also where you can see the specific prayer points that we announced now to unite us all in this battle of prayer. God bless you. I'm Lars Anderson with the Watchman International from the border of Gaza. Shalom. Some. Wow. That's something else. I think we underestimate at times the power of not only prayer, but fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. I know do. that everybody can't do that because of health reasons. But whatever a person could do, even if it was just setting aside one meal a day mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like he says, we keep overlooking. This is a battle that Satan has started. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's a father of lies. Centuries yes. ago. Yeah. Yes. And, and it could be because he's very concerned that the time is growing short and that the Messiah is about to come back. And maybe for the first time he's right, because I think the Messiah <laughs> is about to come back. <laughs> okay, well, this article comes to us from Jerusalem Online. Three IDF soldiers were killed and 15 others were injured this afternoon, that's Wednesday, of course, after a powerful explosive detonated in a house in which the soldiers operated in Khan Yunus, thereby raising the death toll among the officers and the soldiers of the IDF during Operation Protective Edge to, here it is, 56 now. Well, their families have been notified. 27 soldiers were wounded throughout the day in the Gaza Strip. In the afternoon, the security cabinet convened in Tel Aviv to discuss the continuation of the operation. The force spotted the shaft of the tunnel inside the house after scanning through by various means. And once they realized that the house was clean of explosives, they decided to enter the house to expose the tunnel. However, the force did not recognize a powerful explosive device that was attached to the outside wall of the house. The blast of the explosion caused the collapse of part of the building and wounded the soldiers. Israel managed to rescue the wounded troops while under terrorist fire and admitted them to hospitals. In a series of other engagements, a number of other soldiers were wounded and were evacuated for medical treatment. Shortly after the cabinet meeting, Minister Gilad Arden addressed the topics discussed at, at the meeting itself. Well, the operation to neutralize the tunnels continues and will continue until we can say that all the tunnels we know of were neutralized or destroyed, he said. At the same time, we are continuing to injure the terrorist infrastructure. Good for them. We're not looking for any ceasefire. Indeed, at the end of a military action, there should be a positive political move, but it should meet the conditions that Israel wishes, a long-term peace and a demilitarization of the Gaza Strip. Well, within days, we will destroy all the tunnels, he said, in the afternoon, addressed the GLC Southern Command. Uh, Sammy Turgeman, military operation in Gaza, said that. He said that we are within a few days of destroying the tunnels we knew of before the operation, and I guarantee we will destroy the tunnels that were uncovered during the operation. This is the most significant operational and engineering challenge, but every day that passes, we are advancing toward completing that mission. Now, despite Israel's declaration of a humanitarian ceasefire, 1,500 to 1,900 hours, the fighting continued into the afternoon. IDF forces have attacked different areas in Gaza over the last few hours. Palestinian media reported that 15 people were killed and 150 were injured in Sajayiya, while Israel declared a ceasefire, two rockets were fired at Ashdod. Now, the two rockets were intercepted by the Iron Dome system without causing casualties or even damage. In the hours that followed, shooting continued at the communities in the Gaza vicinity. At around 1730 hours, a rocket hit a home in the settlement of Sederot Negev. There were no injuries. This morning, terrorists fired an anti-tank missile at D-9 Bulldozer, that operated in, in Gaza, and two soldiers were lightly wounded by shrapnel. IDF forces spotted a terrorist preparing to throw a grenade from inside a house. 
the Air Force attacked instead. Following the incident, eight terrorists fled the scene and gathered in a nearby house. Ten terrorists were killed after fighter planes attacked the house. So there's a lot going on all the time, one after another. That's right. It doesn't let up now. It, it's intense, and you need to be in intense prayer for Amen. the preservation of God's people. And apparently there's a price to be paid for enormous public support, even when you've already lost five years of your life to terrorists. Word on the street is that people are using social networks like Facebook to attack the family of Gilad Shalit, really? the former IDF Armored Corps soldier who was abducted by Hamas in 2006 and held for five years until he was freed in exchange for more than a thousand terrorists. One Facebook post that has been shared about a thousand times, which is a very large number in Israeli terms, attacked the Shalit family for its silence regarding the present military operation. We did everything for you, wrote Asaf Amram of Tel Aviv, but we have not seen you once, not on television. We have not seen you visiting, neither the war wounded nor the families of the fallen, when in other times those people stood by you. The saddest thing is that we are fighting against the same people whom we freed for your son. Gilad's father, Naum, told uh, Kikar HaShabbat on Tuesday that the allegations against the family are untrue. Who said we don't go to soldiers' families? Just today I visited two bereaved families from our region whose sons fell in Gaza. We don't publicize it. We don't bring cameramen to every event like this. We're private people. In response to the wave of criticism leveled against his family, Galid Shalit gave a short interview to Channel 2 News on Wednesday stating, I pray for the well-being of the soldiers and hope they will return home safely. Thank you. Just as IDF soldiers helped and supported me in the past, so I thank them for their present activity and am following events with concern. Very good. The kind of criticism towards that family is yeah, not only un yeah. unjustified, but it's just cruel. It is. You know, they've been through so much, and of course they're supportive. That's right. Uh, okay, well, this comes to us from the Jerusalem Post, New York. At a rally Monday, attended by more than 6,000 people just half a block from the United Nations headquarters, members of the U.S. House of Representatives, including the ranking member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Elliot Engel, a Democrat from New York, blasted the U.N. for suggesting Israel had committed and should be held accountable for war crimes. Democratic Congressman Steve Israel in New York scolded the U.N. Human Rights Commission and told the crowd that he and more than 100 U.S. representatives had signed a letter to the chief of the UNHRC. The representatives expressed frustration that the UNHRC had not said it would investigate whether Hamas had committed war crimes, and Congressman Israel called on them to do so. Representatives Israel and Engel made light of the partisan split that had plagued Congress for years, saying that although representatives couldn't agree on much, they agree on Israel. Amen. In early July, Representatives Israel, a Democrat from New York, and Tom Cole, a Republican from Oklahoma, uh, introduced a resolution to the House of Representatives, which called for the U.S. to support Israel during this round of conflict. The non-binding resolution passed unanimously. Congressman Israel said 150 co-sponsors, and it passed unanimously on the floor of the House of Representatives. That is unprecedented. That is a modern miracle, yeah. he said. <laughs> After Senator Chuck Schumer, a Democrat from New York, spoke, Engel turned on the media. The media has not exactly been fair to Israel. And it's time we stand up and say, we're not going to accept this biased one-side coverage. Yeah. The media must be fair and it must be accurate. And we have not seen fairness and accuracy at all. Engel also cited the conflict in Syria and asked why the media wasn't paying more attention to that. Monday's rally was just one in a string of pro-Israel gatherings across North America since the current round of fighting began. On Sunday, Stand With Us held a rally in downtown Toronto, Canada, at which a siren was sounded, giving 15 seconds to the 3,000 attendees to lie on the ground. How about to that? To give them a taste of what the, Israel the residents go through. Mm -hmm. 
every time the siren blows. That was good, though. Thank you. Yes, that's an excellent article. Well, Israelis under fire from rockets got some more bad news this week as Tesco, the largest retailer in the U.K., announced it would soon stop selling Israeli dates and other products in its stores. A spokesman denied that the decision was linked to the current conflict, but had been taken for commercial reasons. There was some good news for Israelis, however, in the form of a Pew Research poll released this week showing a clear majority of Americans put the blame for the current crisis in Gaza on its Hamas rulers. That poll and similar indications are likely weighing heavily on the minds of members of Congress this week, just four months ahead of midterm elections. Mm -hmm. An effort to increase funding for Israel's Iron Dome air defense system has picked up speed in Congress, and it's likely to be voted on before Thursday's summer recess. Defense News reported on Tuesday that congressional Republicans are trying to submit the bill for an additional $225 million in supplemental funding, which Israel needs to begin restocking the large number of Iron Dome interceptor missiles it's been forced to fire in the current round of fighting. Bypassing the usual method of tacking it on to a supplemental bill already considered this week to address issues on America's southern border and forest fires in the northwest, the House GOP leadership has made an effort to submit the bill as a standalone measure. Why not? Good for them. Senate Armed Services Committee member Senator uh, Lindsey Graham, Republican from South Carolina, called the Iron Dome issue a matter of life and death for Israelis as they face the terrorist onslaught from Gaza. In related news, reports surfaced this week that Chinese hackers broke into the computers of Israeli firms who produce components for the Iron Dome and stole blueprints and other documents related to the system. Elsewhere, over a dozen leaders of the United Jewish Appeal Federation of New York are touring southern Israel this week and announced a large donation to uh, Barzillai Medical Center in Ashkelon on Tuesday. Very good. Give a few, take a few, I guess. Yep. Huh? I, I hope that the stealing of the documents is not to find some kind of I do too. Uh, way of working around the system. Yes. Okay, well, this comes to us uh, from Dr. Aaron Lerner from MRA. Well, once again, President Obama has succeeded in hardening the Palestinian position by taking a stand that was a harder line than that of the Palestinians. At the start of his first term, President Obama introduced the concept that Israeli-Palestinian negotiations be conditioned on a settlement construction freeze. The Palestinians, who until then engaged in negotiations without such a condition, adopted President Obama's demand. Hmm. Yesterday, President Obama opted to take a radically different stand than the 22 July position of the EU that all terrorist groups in Gaza must disarm when he told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that the disarming of the terrorists in the Gaza Strip would only take place within the context of a final overall Israeli-Palestinian agreement. Oh. Now, the president stressed the U.S. view that ultimately any lasting solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict must ensure the disarmament of terrorist groups and the demilitarization of Gaza. Today, senior Fatah PLO official Saeb Arakat said in an interview on the Arabic Sky News that Israel's demand to disarm the Gaza groups of their weapons is an issue that belongs to negotiations of a permanent settlement and will not even be discussed before Israel rec recognizes a Palestinian state in the 67, 1967 lines that were drawn with Jerusalem as its capital. Check that out. Until now, Palestinian officials declined to take a public stand on this matter, perhaps because the official PA stand is that the PA honors signed agreements and the agreements signed between the PLO and Israel explicitly prohibit that there be armed groups. You know what's interesting, what you just read, is I'm, when I go home at night, I watch CNN and Fox and any of the others that may have this mm -hmm. on. But that article, uh, what Obama had to say, that's the first time I've heard that. Is it? Yep. Yeah. It's not on the other news. Thank well, God we, 
I thank you, God, we have GLC to get the news out. This article comes from a Sheva. According to a report by the Middle East Media Research Institute, MEMRI, uh, senior Palestinian Authority officials have accused U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry of favoring Hamas, insisting that Kerry had presented his own ceasefire proposal to cater to Hamas-backed Qatar in Turkey. Speaking anonymously, a senior Palestinian official told a London-based Saudi daily last week that Kerry's involvement was not simply the product of U.S. naivety, but a calculated attempt to strengthen the Muslim Brotherhood's influence in Egypt. Think? He stated, Kerry proposed his initiative after we were very close to a comprehensive agreement guaranteeing the lifting of the siege on Gaza and obtaining all the Palestinian demands, the official insisted. If the issue was lifting the siege, abolishing the bu uh, buffer zones, opening the crossings, and expanding the fishing zones, we could have obtained this on Wednesday, July 23rd. An announcement of this achievement was ready for publication, but Mashal, head of Hamas Political Bureau, called a press conference and destroyed the Abbas initiative. The official announced that Mahmoud Abbas was very angry about Kerry's proposed Paris talks over a Gaza ceasefire, noting that Turkey and Qatar were invited, but Egypt was not. Abbas allegedly expressed his views on the conference to the French foreign minister. Fatah and PLO representatives later stated that Turkey, Qatar, and Hamas do not represent the Palestinian people and that the only valid representative for international talks is the PLO itself. Several former members and politicians in the PA government proposed in op-ed articles in Arabic language magazines that Kerry's initiative served not only to reinstitute the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, but also to get rid of the PLO. The accusations surfaced despite the formation of a Hamas Fatah unity government in June, which is slowly crumbling after differences of opinion have uh, surfaced over several issues, including the war in Gaza, reactions to the abduction and murder of three Israeli teenagers, and the delayed payment of wages for government workers in Gaza in the weeks leading up to the current conflict. I guarantee there, you have so, not heard that on the secular. There's so much, brother, that you love. <laughs> well, but what's so interesting to me about this is that the media has been saying Israel is the one that's been against Kerry peace mm -hmm. in it, and this has not even come out in the oh, media. No. Oh, no. Thank you, Tommy, for getting that. Okay, as if things couldn't get any worse, right, with Hamas, the Gaza-based terror organization is supposedly in secret talks now with North Korea to purchase weapons. That comes to us from the Telegraph News Group. Well, in a secret arms deal, Western security sources revealed that Hamas is attempting to bolster its arsenal with advanced weaponry and communication equipment that would allow them to maintain their weakening onslaught against the Jewish state. That's right. The deal, which is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, is reportedly being handled by a Lebanese trading company with close ties to a militant Palestinian organization in East Beirut. Hamas is looking for ways to replenish its stock of missiles because of the large numbers it has fired at Israel in recent weeks. Wow, that blows my mind. I know it. I know it. So with North Korea. And, and they are so absolutely out of control. So you need to be praying. Pray for you the have peace your, You have your prayer assignment. God bless you.